Alrighty guys, welcome back to match 14 of my Age of Empires 3 series. Today it's, I'm bringing you a 3-on-3 three on, three on Decan with a uh, German, the Indian, and Iroquois with me as Iroquois against a British, a Sioux, and a Chinese. Right off the bat, I know this map very well because it's one of the only maps that anybody plays on these days. Uh, I start out with extra trait crates, plateau in the middle. Um, extra crates are good for an Iroquois because we're supposed to start off by grabbing a trade post. So not only is there a trade post near me, I have the wood to do it. And that is a very, very good thing. Um, right off the bat, me and my teammates were communicating. We're trying to figure out what units we're going to do. I know that as Iroquois, you're supposed to go Tomahawk or Ayena, I believe is how it's pronounced. Ayenas are basically cheap, easy to make. Um, inexpensive, only cost two to archers. They're weak, but they do the job generally in the right situations. So, right off the bat, I start traveling or I start exploring around the map with my uh, Travoy. I don't know exactly actually at this point that the Travoy cannot make a war hut. I assume that it could. Notice, by the way, I should have tamed that treasure guardian that I was going after in the top of the map. I didn't realize that I couldn't, or I didn't, I didn't realize that I could, I'm sorry, I knew that, uh, I know that I can, I didn't realize that I could though, unfortunately, at this point, so I screwed up there a little bit, but I'll move on from that. Um, with Iroquois, you generally have a few basic viable strategies, the first obviously is the early rush, you age with 16 or 17 villagers, sending the 3 villager age card in the first age, and grabbing a trade post along the way, you use your... Uh, Travoy after scouting, I believe, to build a house. You then send a vill forward villager to build a war hut. Didn't realize about the forward villager though, because I thought that the forward tra the, the Travoy could build the uh, war hut, but this Travoy, your discovery Travoy, cannot unfortunately. So, bummer. Um, another great strategy or common strategy with Iroquois is a fast fortress. Actually, believe it or not, and the goal of a fast fortress is. You age up the same way in the first age, but you also make sure you gather 300 coin. And then you ship 600 coin. You age to the first age with the um, politician that gives you resources. And then you fast age to the third age. So that's a, also a very viable option. If you do it that way, you'll get two Travoy. Plus um, advantage of any shipments. You still grab the trade post, do whatever you would normally do. Probably would want to make a market in that situation. I'm not sure. I'm not going to do that, though. <laughs> I'm going to do a mix of the both. I'm going to kind of get to the second age with the strong economy. I'm going to definitely send uh, villager cards or whatever, but I'm not going to fast fortress. So I'm going to kind of make my own strategy up here just because it's my first game with the Iroquois. I didn't even play a practice game to practice the strategy I wanted to use. I just straight up recorded a game. My time right now is extremely limited to get everything done I need to do. So I didn't have time to play an hour or so practicing with the civilization. I just sat down, just straight up recorded a game with the Iroquois, even though I have not played them in Rush, ever. Did make a Rush deck, by the way. I'm not sure if it's a good and proper Rush deck or not. Um, I probably didn't even need to gather that coin there. I gathered that coin thinking I might fast fortress because I was thinking I'll just get 300. But then like halfway through I decided no. And then I sent that villager to go build a forward war hut because I don't have one. Very convoluted thinking going on in my head right now. Not good at all. Unfortunately, that kind of sets me back. So my strategy play or my gameplay of this game wasn't the most streamlined that it could possibly have been. Unfortunately. But... We'll get past that, I'm sure, with just a little bit of time and effort with Iroquois. So I keep making villagers. I think you're supposed to age with 16 or 17, and I presume that involves sending the um, three villager shipment in the first age. Now, the strategy I read about the Iroquois didn't mention the three villager shipment at all, unfortunately. Like, it just didn't even mention it. I guess it just took it for granted. However, because I didn't read it there and I didn't think about it till later, I didn't send it. When I really should have sent the three villager shipment already. So... That's not great, but on the plus side, I do actually get an extra military shipment when it's beginning my initial push this way. So I don't know, uh, for you people who care out there, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing to forego three villagers. Because you're still going to age up at about the same time. Forgo three villagers in exchange for five or seven or six extra men, depending on which unit you send. Now, Iroquois is a civilization. Their main advantage, from best I've been able to tell, their main advantage is that... Um, by the way, I should have run to the fort here. I didn't even think about it. I ran away. I could have just run right to the fort. I didn't even think about it until looking back on it. So, foolish gameplay right there by me, unfortunately. 
But Iroquois' main advantage is that they mass units in the second age really, really easily. Look at their cards. Seven. Um, is that six or eight? Seven. I think that's six. Seven, Ayana, six Tomahawk, five Kanye Horseman. They can send um, six more Tomahawks through their home city. Big button upgrade, plus making just one batch of units. So just by shipments and making one unit, if they get the trade post, they can have a full army of 30-ish men, 30-plus men, with um, all different units, with some horse thrown in, with some heavy infantry, with some light infantry. Let me actually think about that. You have seven Ayana, you build five, that's 13. You send five to six Tomahawk, that's 19. You send six more, that's 25. You send the five horsemen, that's 30. So you can have 30 men real, relatively quickly. And that's a really hard rush to beat. Now, in general, you should have built a forward uh, war hut already, which I have not done. You should have built a forward war hut, so you can just send your men straight to the, um, straight to the, uh, war hut, the home city shipments, the big button shipments also arrive at your home city arrival point. So I should have done it that way. Made a little bit of a boo-boo here. Unfortunately, I do send my new, unfortunately, it's not the greatest gameplay in the world. Fortunately, it's not going to cripple me because I do get my other War Hut from my Second Age Travoy. I will use that War Hut to uh, start sending men there. And I am getting an army mustered up fairly quickly, I think. I, I'm, I'm at least impressed by it. I mean, 5 minutes and 40 seconds in the game. I already have 11 men on the field, 4 horses coming. I'm about to make a batch and I have my big button shipment too because I have a plethora of food. Um, in terms of economy-wise, though, for uh, Iroquois early age, you're going to want to mainly go uh, primarily food with uh, about 30 or 40 split on wood if you're going to go Tomahawk, depending on it. There are, the Kanye horsemen, Kan Kanye horsemen also rely on wood. So really, if you're going to be an Iroquois and you just want to have a strong colonial and power through them using colonial units, 60-40 split is probably, or maybe even 50-50, depending on how much wood you're going to need, because wood gathered generally gathers generally slower than food, is generally going to be what you're going to want to do. Um, notice there, I was starting to make tomahawk, but then I needed the wood to build another house, so then I quit making them, I made some mayennas, because they're cheap and they're food, just boistering to my army, and at this point I'm like, alright, I'm going to get the big button shipment, and then that's a big army, plus Purple's got his army. Now we're going to attack together, because if we attack together, we're going to have the advantage of having all these units and all this firepower. If we attack separately in two different places, there's a good chance they could beat us. But if we have two very good sized, very fast armies tacked together, not only do we have the numbers advantage, we have um, kind of a damage advantage, if that makes sense. In terms of the damage we can inflict on them, a second will be much higher. So we're actually less likely to lose hit points, which means our units are going to last longer, if that makes sense. Um, maybe I can explain it this way. Um, because there's going to be like twice as many people firing, they're going to die twice as fast, which means they're going to get half the chance to inflict damage than they would if it was just... Uh, one army on one army when it's a two on one battle in a rush game. So we, I, I tell my teammate we gotta attack together. He, he's a smart player. He obliges, and it's going to be good. We immediately go for the war academy, just general stuff. You know, you always want to take out the military buildings. Um, I think I looked up there because Lou said he was being rushed, but I guarantee you he's not being rushed anymore. There's no way they're thinking about anything other than our army right now. Fortunately, I have some con, con yet. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it. Kanye Horseman in there, tearing up the field, doing a great, great job. Keep making villager production, doing normal stuff. Oh, sorry, I got a text message from my girlfriend. She wanted to know if I wanted lunch. I said yes. Because I'm recording this actually between classes. Because that's how the life of a college student works. <laughs> Alrighty, so I keep telling them to move in more. Let's just get everybody there is kind of my mentality. Let's have so many men there that we just decimate them, you know what I mean? And that tiger, if you saw it right there, just mauled that um, flamethrower. That was pretty cool. I love that you can use treasure guardings. Um, another plus of being Iroquois, by the way, is that they send four and three villagers shipments. I think most civilizations actually do. But uh, it's very, very nice to have four and three villager shipments. It really just helps an otherwise weak economy be pretty strong for the most part. So... We keep mauling them, and in comes some horsemen. This is a great example of t fighting in bulk that I was talking about. Like, you look at these horsemen, right? 
and that those that's a formidable amount of horsemen but when you have two armies fighting even if it's all infantry and there's only one guy's worth of horses coming we have the advantage we're gonna take less damage we're gonna kill them faster so even though he's got the appropriate counter he's probably not even gonna kill all of us just because we have the advantage a massive advantage of numbers you know what I mean um, in terms of micromanagement though gameplay micromanagement and improvement I can do I probably should look away less when I'm in battle it's just I always need to like manage my economy like if I don't look back like f five times a game I feel like I'm not making villagers or whatever or five times a battle so Anyway, the game's progressing fairly well. We're gonna go on for his town center. Um, the Sioux hasn't been able to do much. I don't know if he's new to the Sioux or what, but so far it's been a really good game. I asked Blue soon. Have I asked him yet? To get his cavalry in there, because I see it on the my mini map. I, I'll notice it soon. Um, it's not necessarily bad to wait in a master units. I just would have preferred him to just straight up throw them all at once into the fight, but. Anyway, here you're really getting just to see the Iroquois' power. Just the difference in the variety of units they have really just makes them a versatile, dangerous civilization. Um, what do I send? I send three villagers. Okay, so. And that's a really advantage to Iroquois. Is I send, what, 30 population in military. I send 10 population in villagers. Now I'm going to send some resources. It very, very much helps us out. Um, or helps me out. I remind Blue where his horses were, by the way. I, I don't think he forgot them. I was just, um, I don't know. I was being facetious, maybe. It's, like, it's just like, hey, man, your horses are sitting there, man. Get those Elaines in the battle. I mean, especially when you're facing a guy who's making only longbows, having those Elaines on the field, even if there's only five a batch or three a batch, wouldn't have hurt, but it's okay. Purple's being a little rude, but what you gonna do about it? I keep trying to make keeping villager production constant. Um, it's hard to keep a steady flow of villager slash military production but it's going well and I totally missed here by the way that green was attacking me if I had noticed I wouldn't have lost like four or five men I don't think I've realized yet because I'm thinking about him I sent him to go to build another trade post thinking I'll get some resources and then here I finally realized oh wait he's attacking me so like a complete idiot I just ignored what was going on down there um really guys just pay better attention this is an attention game it's all the little details that you don't pay attention to that will make or break the game for you but at this point it's going fairly well he's going to send out some choke on her one little army um that's not going to do much of anything to us unfortunately blue does lose some um cav but i tell blue to get those cav out there get them on red we'll take care of these few little archers and green quits and i guess i know why green quit i mean he's about to lose his porcelain tower um, maybe he should have built the uh, wonder that allows him to make soldiers. It not only would it give him food immediately, it would give him a steady string of soldiers. But it's his prerogative to make what he wanted. So there you go. Iroquois summary as a civilization. Um, strong second age rush. They mass units very well. They have the travois, which can be a huge advantage. They're very good once they get their shipments. Their units match up well. They're a overused, overpowered second age civilization in every sense of the word, overpowered. So if you're new to the game or you want to really just have a civilization that will take you all the way, I would try Iroquois, at least from what I've read. Um, it's, it's versatile too. You have some fast fortress options because unlike the other native civs, remember, Iroquois can actually use cannons. So... Iroquois is really strong. I mean, you definitely want to get pressure on them before you get to the fourth age because then your lack of factories will become a little bit more obvious and be a little bit of a disadvantage. But second, third age conflicts, you should be very, very strong, and that is absolutely for sure. So I can't, I take a look around. I'm very happy that I had the most men and I killed the most. I killed more than I had. That's not something I generally do. I'm not great with my military micromanagement so I'm, I'm just glad it worked out well I'm taking a look at my villager count here very happy that I had the villager cards it allowed my economy to really just keep growing because I think I sent total 12 villagers from the home city so that went very 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 well so um not much more to say here um just gonna say I did get a, asked why I haven't played some German matches and I just want to oh by the way notice here if I may interrupt myself really fast I'm in the lower echelon of resources gathered so I don't gather resources as fast even though I had a lot of villagers but um 
I was asked why I haven't gotten some German games out there, and I just wanted to say, I'm sorry, I don't have much free time. I haven't been playing games for fun. Literally, the only times I've been playing, I've been recording it and throwing it up on YouTube. So, thanks for watching. Know that I will get to the German request, and I will get other things to you guys in the future. Um, sorry it hasn't come yet. Uh, keep an eye out, though. I will answer your requests, new and old. Thanks for watching again. Catch you guys next time.